Namaste students. Today we are going to start with the third chapter from Hornbills that is discovering that the saga continues. The meaning of the word saga is nothing else but an epic or a long story. So discovery of this particular mummy of Tut was started long back in 1922 and it still continues. That's why the writer has given the topic as discovering Tut, the saga continues. Writer's name is A.R. Williams. A.R. Williams is a former senior writer for National Geographic magazine and online news where she covered the world and all that's in it for almost three decades. She specialized in archaeology, writing features that took her from Egypt to Alaska, a monthly piece for the ancient world sessions section of the magazine and new stories on the latest archaeological discoveries. This particular chapter is a living example of technology advancement. We accepted things and events attributing their cause to nature and her work. In this way, it has become a habit with us to accept everything that history states and dictates. However, advancement and technology could give us a different picture. On the process, the modern world has found ways to offer a different view on it. It has turned impossibilities to possibilities. So here is the chapter. I want you to open the textbook. If textbook is not available, no problem. I have the text over here in front of you. So let's begin. He was just a teenager when he died. You can see the mummy in, uh, on the screen over here. So when he died, he was just a teenager. You can see he was just 18 or 19 years old. The last heir of a powerful family that had ruled Egypt and its empire for centuries. He was laid to rest, laden with gold and eventually forgotten. As we proceed, we are going to see the different things which were not discovered later on. So as it is said in this particular slide, he was a teenager when he died and then he was buried or you can say his mummy was, he was mummified and then he laid to rest laden with gold and eventually he was forgotten. Why he was forgotten and what happened that full discovery is still going on and there are lots of clues coming out. So let's see the next slide. Since the discovery of his tomb in 1922, so as I told you in 1922, the discovery of his tomb was done. The modern world has speculated about what happened to him with murder being the most extreme possibility because a king or at a very young age, he died. So there is a possibility. It is no, it is no, it was not clear. So there, the people, they speculated that maybe it was a murder. Now, leaving his tomb for the first time in almost 80 years, the sentence, the meaning of the sentence is long back in 1922, this particular mummy was discovered. Some research was done and later on again it was made to rest in its tomb. After 80 years, now of course it's more than 80 years, now leaving his tomb for the first time in almost 80 years, Tut has undergone a CT scan that offers new clues about his life and death and provides precise data for an accurate forensic reconstruction of the boyish pharaoh. I have given down the meaning of the phrase forensic reconstruction. Now what is the meaning of forensic reconstruction? It refers to the process of creating a face. You can see in the picture over here. Here we have this skull. And using this forensic reconstruction technology, they are creating a face. And by creating this, they have found out how that used to look. So it refers to a process of creating a face on the skull and see how the owner of the skull looked like. Here, it refers to construction of the bust of, the, of King Tut. So here you can see this part is the skull. And here using the technology, they are finding out how the owner of this particular skull looked. So here we have an angry 
an angry wind stirred up ghostly dust devils as king tut was taken from his resting place in the ancient egyptian cemetery known as the value of the kings if you see in your textbook page number 24 you have a map and there they have given along the banks of the river nile and if you know river nile is the longest river in the world and this is the only river which flows from south to north so there they have shown that on the bank of the river nile there is king of valleys sorry valley of the kings and valley of the queens that is nothing else but the burial ground of this particular kings and queens those who died so an angry wind stirred up ghostly dust devils as King Tut was taken from his resting place in the ancient Egyptian cemetery known as the Valley of the, Valley of the Kings. Dark bellied clouds had scudded across the desert sky all day and now were veiling the stars in casket grey. Beautifully, the author has mentioned about no, uh, people, those who visit this mummies, they are scared of the curse of the mummies. So here the writer is trying to create a scary image that what happened? An angry wind steer, when uh, Tut's mummy was removed, was removed from his resting place, outside you can say ghostly dust devils were created, created because of the storm. And then dark bellied clouds had scudded across. Scudded means what? To move quickly. So dark bellied clouds had scudded across the desert sky all day. And now were veiling the stars in casket grey. Stars are compared to be the jewels over here. Casket in the sense is you know, the jewelry box. And grey is the background. No Casket grey. It, it, like as if the dark bellied clouds are covering the stars and it has given uh, the writer has given the image of casket gray okay? beautifully she has explained this and tried to create a scary image of what happened or what I don't know, what fear people they have over there when they remove the mummies out so it was 6 pm in the evening it was 6 pm on 5th january 2005 the whole sorry the world's most famous mummy glided head first into a city scanner brought here to probe the lingering medical mysteries of this little understood young ruler who died more than 3300 years ago it's not even that it's more than 3300 years ago because now this particular mummy which was long discovered, long back discovered in 1922, was again brought up, was again brought back. Why? Because daily we have this advanced technology coming up. So here now they felt, okay, fine, let's find out, let's scan this mummy. So here you can see the picture. I've just tried to get the picture from the from the uh, internet. Here what they have done is they are slide, that mummy of that is gliding through the city scanner. And what happens next? All afternoon, the usual line of tourists, you can see the line of, this is what is the usual line found now because of Corona, maybe it's not there, but this is what is the rush over there, not only to see the mummy of Tut, but various, various discoveries, uh, uh, or you can say various other mummies discovered over there. So all afternoon, the usual line of tourists from around the world had descended into the cramped rocket tomb some 26 feet underground to pay their respect this particular tomb of uh, Tut is somewhat 26 feet underground and the story goes that during the rainy season or when the Nile was flooded this particular entrance of tomb of uh, Tut got covered up and that's why this is untouched by any of the people only we can see before 1922 of course you will come get to know the uh, person archaeologist who found out it but before that it was buried into the okay, buried in sand and no one knew that yes there is the tomb of this particular young king whose name is Tut. So this is the picture of the tourist you can say rocket tomb 26 feet underground to pay their tributes or respects you can say. 
they gazed at the murals on the walls of the burial chamber and peered at Tut's gilded face, the most striking feature of his mummy-shaped outer coffin lid. Some visitors read from guidebooks in a whisper. Others stood silently, perhaps pondering Tut's untimely death in his late tints or wondering what a shiver if the pharaoh's curse, death or misfortune falling upon those who disturbed him was really true because these people had heard about like if you disturb the mummy the curse falling but i've seen mummy part one mummy part two right so when the when the mummy is disturbed the person who goes to disturb you know gets a curse and we said that the person who discovered mum, uh, tut's mummy or tut's tomb later on he died but what was the reason we know the reason what is the reason it's not the curse but some other reason why he died so this is what is the picture i'm going to show you one slide you know, one small video about this particular tome that is tome of tut egypt birthplace of one of the most enigmatic civilizations in history the pyramid tombs and the valley of the kings the final resting places of powerful pharaohs. Of the possible 63 tombs in the valley, there is one that outshines the rest and has captured the world's imagination. The tomb of Tutankhamun. The boy king was just 18 years old when he died, but his priceless golden treasures have made him the most famous pharaoh of all time. His funerary riches have been displayed all over the world. But now they are all coming back to Egypt. So the mummy is in very bad condition because of what Carter did in 1920s this is who, who is the person you can see in the picture he is zahi hawas secretary general of egypt's supreme council of antiquities as he leaned over the body for a long first look so as he was just analyzing he was just looking at the mummy he said this dialogue what is that the mummy is in very bad condition because of what Carter did in 1920. So here we get to know the person's name who discovered Tut's mummy. So the name is Carter. Of course, we are going to go in detail about this. Carter, Howard Carter, that is what the British archaeologist who in 1922 discovered Tut's tomb after years of futile searching. Its contents had, though hastily ransacked in antiquity, were surprisingly complete. They remain the richest royal collection ever found and have become part of the pharaoh's legend. So you can see Howard Carter over here in the picture examining the mummy of Tut when he was in search of it and after lots of no, futile search, futile, uh, this would at last he could discover this and when he saw what problem he faced we are going to see the next picture. Stunning artifacts in gold. You can see over here I've used the artifacts. It is fully in gold. So stunning artifacts in gold. Their eternal brilliance meant to guarantee a resurrection. What is the meaning of resurrection? You have heard this before. It is nothing else but life after death. Caused a sensation at the time of the discovery and still get the most attention. These were people in Egypt. They believe that our, our king or queen after their death they require certain things and that's why they used to bury all the things which are required along with their bodies into their tomb okay so stunning artifacts in gold all these things are the discoveries or along with the mummy of the particular king called Tut. along with him there were caskets different different you know cabin like things were there and all the required things 
for the king after life or sorry after death whatever is required were buried over there so stunning artifacts in gold their eternal brilliance meant to guarantee resurrection caused a sensation at the time of the discovery and still get the most attention but that was also buried with everyday things he would want in the afterlife what were the things which were buried along with him is board games you have the chess carrom all these things so even for along with him board games a bronze razor linen undergarments cases of food and wine you will be surprised why all these such things are kept if you remember when you have learned history uh, mohanj uh, harappa and mohanj uh, civilization even they had the uh, you know, uh, uh, pro- tradition of or again say custom of burying their dead and along with their dead bodies they used to bury the things what were used by those people so it is a belief that they you know after their death there is life and they require all those things in that particular life we'll see the next slide now so here we have after months of carefully recording the pharaoh's funerary treasures carter began investigating his three nested coffins as i told you three nested coffins were there one into the other one into the other opening the first he found a shroud adorned with garlands of willow and olive leaves wild celery lotus petals and cornflowers the faded evidence of a burial in march or april from this we get to know that when this particular mummy was buried but because march or april is a time when you no know, all these things blooms or you can say all these things are found in nature like he is point he is pointing out that garlands of willow and olive leaves wild celery lotus petals and cornflowers and though this is a proof that this particular body was buried during the month of march or april here i have a small video in front of you you can just watch it about the three golden casks or you can say cof- coffins and what on all things are found which we are going to read afterwards when howard carter's team opened the tomb in november 1922 they discovered a wealth of treasures and gifts the king would need in the afterlife six disassembled golden chariots his throne and provisions of food and wine concealed behind a false wall was a stone sarcophagus protecting a gold-plated coffin inside it two more coffins the innermost made of solid gold and covered in gemstones and inside that the mummy of tutankhamun wearing a magnificent death mask the most famous find in all of egypt so you can see when the this slide also i have already showed you there are three nested coffins and here i have given the meaning of the funerary treasures what is it the valuable things with which the king was buried were no less than treasures as most of the items were made of pure gold they are thus referred to as funerary treasures because those were really treasure they were really precious things of gold and all those things were buried along with the king so let's go on to the next uh, next slide so when he finally reached the mummy though he ran into trouble the ritual resins had hardened now if we have seen any video where they do this mummification what they do is they keep the dead body into the salt for almost for many many days so that the water is observed and then they that body is so uh, they uh, put a resin on the body a resin is nothing else it's it's a, it's a yellowish liquid which, which is sticky which we get from the trees it's like gum and that thing is entirely spread on the body on that they do uh, before that what they do is they remove all the internal parts the important internal parts are removed from the body they are kept in a different caskets and the body is entirely wrapped into a linen 
on that lenin again they will put a resin on that on that uh, resin again they will wrap the body with the lenin that entire coffin you know, they uh, the picture or you can say the poster of the king or the queen who died that thing is pasted on their face the entire mummy is kept you no know, be below the mummy they keep a wooden plank and then that entire mummy is kept into a coffin a golden coffin on that one more coffin and still on that on one more coffin so the three coffins are there you had seen in the previous uh, slide three coffins of even king tut was there it differs with different different kings so here what he says is when he finally reached the mummy though he ran into trouble the ritual resins had hardened cementing tut to the bottom of his solid gold coffin no amount of legitimate force could move them carter wrote later what was to be done now if you search or if you just browse the videos about king tut it is said that king tut was buried in a place which was not meant for him the king in advance before their death they used to you know uh, select a place they used to make you know uh, they used to uh, get it ready and then they after the death he was so you know, he was buried in that particular place so here if you see king tut's coffin was too small for him it was not meant for him and even the uh, resin was not was not left to dry for a long time because once if the resin is poured on the body they keep the body for a long time till the resin dries and then on that again one more layer and that cough it is kept in the coffin but king tut's problem was actually the situation was he was not given the his body was not given the chance to dry that resin to dry so what happened here carter faced a problem because his body got stuck that resin was still wet and uh, the entire tomb was prepared so his body got stuck to the bottom of the coffin gold coffin so he said it, it was difficult for him to remove to separate that coffin and his its his body that is what he mentions over here let's see what he did to remove that the sun can can be down like a hammer this far south in egypt now you all know the temperature in egypt so here the thing is they tried the sun can be down like a hammer this far south in egypt and carter tried to use it to loosen the resins now maybe carter thought if i keep the body in hot sun maybe resins will melt the liquid thing will melt and i i would be able to remove the body from the coffin for several hours he set the mummy outside in blazing sunshine that heated to it it to 149 degrees fahrenheit nothing budged he reported with scientific detachment that the consolidated material had to be sealed away from beneath the limbs and trunk before it was possible to raise the king's remains so it was really it was actually you can say difficult for tut to remove or you can see he tried all the scientific reason uh, ways of separating tut's mummy from the coffin but he couldn't so at last what he did is he decided to seal the body from the coffin in his defense carter really had little choice if he hadn't cut the mummy free thieves most certainly would have circumvented the guards and ripped it apart to remove the gold what is the meaning of circumvented the thieves would have easily cheated the guards over there of course the tomb was discovered for a time suppose if he waited for the mummy to get separated from the coffin there were chances that the you no know, local thieves they would have cheated or outpassed this particular guards and they would have looted the coffin of uh, tut so what he said in his defense carter really had little choice if he hadn't cut the mummy free thieves most certainly would have circumvented the guards and ripped it apart to remove the gold in tut's time the royals were fabulously wealthy and they thought or hoped that i'll just remove my video from here because you can't read it they could take their riches with them so as i told you the 
essential things precious things of the kings and the queens were buried along with their bodies why because they thought they will require all these things as they are kings and queens they won't use cheap eyed things they want precious things to be used after their death so here i've used here circumvented the meaning of the word circumvented the thieves would easily bypass the guards with artfulness and rip the mummy apart to remove the gold because they will not bother what is the historical importance of this mummy how they can find about the past they are not no they will not bother about all these things they will just loot it for the sake of gold or other precious things for his journey for his journey to the great beyond king tut was lavished with glittering goods precious collars inlaid necklaces and bracelets rings amulets a ceremonial apron sandals seats for his fingers and toes and the now iconic inner coffin and mask all of pure gold so this is what it speaks about the treasure let's read again for his journey now which is that journey from like after death journey for his journey to the great beyond king tut was lavished with glittering goods what was those glittering goods precious collars you have might have seen this precious golden collars in the movie like like a movie like mummy and all these things inlaid necklaces necklaces were there bracelets were there rings were there amulets in hindi we say you no know, ties Uh, just to keep away from bad omens they tie this amulets either to the arms or they tie in their neck a ceremonial apron sandals seats means coating so you can say cover cover for their fingers and toes so seats for his fingers and toes and now iconic inner coffin and mask all of pure gold the inner coffin where the mummy was kept was of pure gold and the mask which was there on his face was also of pure gold to separate tut from his adornments carters men removed the mummy's head and severed nearly every major joint once they had finished they reassembled the remains on a layer of sand in a wooden box with padding that concealed the damage the bed where tut now rests of course after removing the body from the coffin and all, all this uh, research work and all again the mummy was kept in the coffin but before keeping it of course his head was separated his arms were separated so it should not be more damaged and further what he did is he uh, he just made a bed of sand and on that bed of sand in a wooden box with proper padding and all these things the body was kept as it was discovered so he tried his best to keep it safe let's see about archaeology archaeology has changed substantially in the intervening decades focusing less on treasure and more on the fascinating details of life and integrating mysteries of death it also uses more sophisticated tools including medical technology that cakes his chest his breastbone and front ribs now if we actually see this particular passage is missing over here archaeology 